We'll start at the very top with uh, Deutsche Welle, NPR. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, you said that you will be making decisions at this meeting about how to increase uh, national stockpiles and, and keep, your, keep your arsenals full while supplying more to Ukraine. But for example, with the air defense, the air-to-air -air missile system that Germany is sending, that was something that, sh that Germany was expecting to order for itself. Estonia has sent its entire shipment of javelins to Ukraine. So are you worried that while allies are supplying Ukraine with everything they can, they are leaving themselves unprotected at home? And what will be your deliverables out of this meeting that will change that in terms of manufacturing processes and streamlining this? Thank you. <clears throat> so NATO allies have provided unprecedented support to Ukraine uh, with uh, capabilities, weapons, ammunition, uh, different types of military support. And that is something, of course, we welcome and we have encouraged this from NATO uh, ever since the uh, uh, invasion started. Actually, we, 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 we did that before the invasion. We have to remember that NATO allies have provided support to Ukraine since 2014, including uh, training tens of thousands of Ukrainian officers, soldiers, which are now playing a key role uh, in the defense against uh, the, the, the Russian ag aggression against Ukraine. But after the invasion, the allies stepped up. Uh, and of course, very much of the support that NATO allies have provided, the javelins, the, the, the air defense systems, the ammunition they have provided to Ukraine, that has been taken from ex existing stocks. So by doing that, they have reduced their stocks. But that has been the right thing to do. Uh, because it is important for all of us that Ukraine wins um, the battle, the war against uh, the invading Russian forces. Uh, because if Putin wins, that is not only a big defeat for the Ukrainians, but it will be defeat and dangerous for all of us, because it will make uh, the world more dangerous and it will, will make us more vulnerable for further Russian aggression. So that's the reason why we have used NATO stocks, uh, stocks in NATO other countries, to provide support to Ukraine. But of course, the, the, the longer this war drags on, the more important it is that we also then are able to replenish these stocks. And that's exactly why we now are addressing how can we uh, ramp up production so we can uh, uh, produce more, both to replenish stocks, but also to continue to support Ukraine. And uh, I expect ministers to make decisions um, uh, at uh, the ministerial meeting uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow on how to use the NATO defence planning process uh, to agree on the more uh, ambitious targets uh, uh, on, for instance, uh, uh, different uh, capabilities, including looking into uh, the possibility of increasing uh, the targets, the guidelines for stocks. Um, this will provide the industry with the long-term demand they need to invest in new uh, production uh, capabilities um, because they have been able to increase production partly by uh, utilizing existing uh, um, production cap capacity more, but uh, to really ramp up production they need to make new investments. I also expect them to agree on how we can further um, strengthen our interoperability, ensure that allies can work together and also jointly uh, purchase um, uh, ammunition uh, uh, capabilities, partly to reduce uh, stocks, but also to, to actually ensure interoperability between allies. And the, the unique NATO defence planning process is, I think, the best tool to ensure that allies uh, are coordinated and actually provide the long-term uh, demand messages to industry to ramp up production. Okay, we'll go to Associated Press. Just then. Thanks. Yes, Lorne Cook from the Associated Press. I have a question on, um, on infrastructure. Uh, Germany was, uh, oh, how can I put it? Um, Deutsche Bahn had its uh, communications cables severed over the weekend in, in Germany, cut off transport in the north of the country. We've also seen the leaks to the, uh, to the pipelines, obviously Nord Stream going to Germany. Um, at, at what point do these attacks, uh, <coughs> to, sorry, do these incidents then become acts of war? And how does NATO respond to that as a collective alliance? You said the allies would respond, but how do you do that in this kind of instance? Thank you. 
Over the last years, NATO has uh, implemented the biggest transformation of collective defense since the end of the Cold War. And part of that is to take fully into account uh, hybrid threats, cyber threats. And therefore, also stated a few years ago that hybrid and cyber attacks can trigger Article 5, uh, can constitute an armed attack against a NATO ally. And uh, we have um, stepped up both uh, uh, our work on resilience, the protection of critical infrastructure. Uh, we are uh, conducting more exercises, both on hybrid threats and cyber threats. And we are exchanging best practices and we also agreed guidelines on the protection of the critical infrastructure. All of this is about protecting, for instance, undersea uh, uh, capabilities or undersea infrastructure, pipelines, uh, cables, but also, of course, energy uh, 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 grids, uh, energy production, uh, uh, transportation infrastructure. Of course, I cannot comment on those specific incidents because there are ongoing investigations. And I think we need to uh, await the outcome of this in, in investigation before we make any final judgment. But in general, I can say that, of course, we are closely monitor, uh, monitoring uh, every incident that may constitute a hybrid uh, or cyber attack against uh, NATO allies. And uh, we are ready to take the necessary measures if needed. Exactly what kind of measure depends on the nature of the attack. And we will never give our potential adversaries the privilege of defining exactly where the threshold for Article 5 uh, goes. That will be a decision we make as allies, taking into account uh, the precise uh, context, the, the, the specific situation we will face if there is a a uh, hybrid or cyber attack against the NATO ally. Uh, Interfax Ukraine, lady in the middle there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Secretary General, according to Americans and Ukrainians, yesterday strike on Ukraine were planned in advance and nothing to do with Kerch Bridge, as Russian claims. And moreover, some analysts also said that Ukraine have nothing to do with Kerch Bridge, which was simply used as pretext for this strike. Does NATO share the same assessment? And do you think, is this a turning point of this war? What could it change on the battlefield? And some short follow-up to Terry question. You said that ministers will discuss how refill uh, stocks only tomorrow, but war is going on already for seven months. Why it was not done before? Thank you. So first, uh, we have uh, already, of course, started uh, the dialogue with the industry uh, and uh, with the different allies on how to ramp up production and, and, and refill or replenish our stocks. Uh, we had a meeting of the uh, NATO armament directors a couple of weeks ago here in, uh, in NATO. Uh, so this is an ongoing work. But when all the ministers meet tomorrow, of course, that provides an excellent opportunity to take stock of what we have achieved, how far we have been able to, to move on ramping of production, um, uh, but also then to make new decisions on how to further ensure uh, that we are not only digging into existing stocks to provide support to Ukraine, but actually also able to ramp up production. And we need to ramp up production of ammunition and, and weapons uh, to both ensure the deterrence on defense or our own allies, NATO allies, but also to have enough to continue for the long haul to provide support to Ukraine. But, but just to prevent any misunderstanding, this work doesn't start now. It has been going on for some time, but of course the longer the war uh, in Ukraine continues, this uh, uh, work on, uh, uh, with the industry uh, becomes more and more important uh, because then they need the decisions, they need the uh, NATO de defense planning uh, 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 process, uh, decisions, capability targets uh, to be sure that actually they can make the necessary investments to be able to produce, uh, to, to produce uh, uh, more. Uh, then if the question was about how the attacks uh, yesterday will change the, the situation on the battlefield, I think what we saw yesterday is actually a sign of weakness because the reality is that they are not able to make progress on the battlefield. Russia is actually losing on the battlefield. They are giving up territory because they don't have uh, the capabilities uh, uh, to stop uh, the Ukrainian forces making advances. So the way they are able to then respond is by indiscriminate uh, 
uh, attacks on uh, Ukrainian cities, uh, hitting civilians, uh, critical infrastructure, and of course this uh, uh, causes suffering, damage on Ukraine, but in many ways this actually reflects the lack of alternatives for President Putin. Uh, they are losing ground, they have lost the momentum, and then they have to revert to uh, uh, missile strikes and air strikes in the way we saw yesterday and, and actually also uh, today. Um, uh, then the, the first question. I will... Yeah. Well, well. So ne Russia has conducted the similar attacks uh, earlier in the war. We have seen, uh, of course, there is some time since we have seen similar attacks against Kiev and some of the, the cities in the western part of the. Uh, country, but we have seen attacks against cities uh, in Kherson, in Saporizhia, in other parts of, of Ukraine actually quite regularly. So, so they have these capabilities exactly when these attacks were, uh, were uh, planned. I will not go into it, but, but the reality is that it doesn't change the nature of the attack. These are attacks against uh, 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 um, cities. Uh, civilians are killed. Civilian infrastructure uh, is, is, is targeted. Uh, and this is unacceptable, and, uh, and this is uh, uh, something uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, goes against the international law. Financial Times. Henry Foy, Financial Times, thank you so much for the question. Um, I want to ask about the nuclear exercises. Was there any discussion amongst the 30 allies whether this was such a good idea to practice flying nuclear weapons around, given the heightened uh, threats from Russia and the potential for miscalculation or misunderstanding. And secondly, um, will this year's exercise uh, be different to previous years given the context, which of course is incredibly important here? And I'm aware that it's an annual exercise, it's routine, so th that's all understood. But I, I'm asking about whether or not there was a discussion inside the Alliance about whether now was really the right time to do this. Thank you. Now is the right time to be firm and uh, to be clear that uh, NATO is there uh, to protect and defend all allies. And this is a, a long time planned exercise, actually planned before the invasion of uh, Ukraine. It's a routine exercise and it's an exercise to ensure that our nuclear deterrent remains safe, secure and effective. I visited uh, this exercise uh, a few years ago. Um, uh, we have been open about the exercise uh, and I think uh, uh, it uh, would send a very wrong signal if we suddenly now cancelled a routine, long-time planned exercise because of the war in Ukraine. That would be absolutely the wrong signal to send. And we need to understand that NATO's firm, predictable behaviour, our military strength, is the best way to, to, to prevent escalation. We are there to preserve peace, to prevent escalation and prevent any attack on NATO allied countries. So uh, uh, if we now um, created grounds for any misunderstanding, miscalculation in Moscow about our willingness to protect and defend all allies, we would increase the risk for escalation and that's the last thing we will do.